Hello everyone, this is David Harris, the, one of the helpers and the leaders at the children's me meeting in the Iron Hall, normally on a Wednesday evening at 6.30. Um, as you could probably imagine, things have changed quite a bit and it's very unusual uh, circumstances we're in, uh, but as a church we would like to carry on and keep doing something on a Wednesday evening and also for a Sunday school and a Sunday afternoon. And we would really hope that you're able to join us, to listen in, to take part maybe in some of the little competitions and challenges that we would set. And it would be really useful for you just to carry on and understand perhaps a little bit more about the Bible and God's message to us, even when times are difficult, even when things are a bit strange and things aren't going really the way that we maybe think they should. I'm sitting here in my kitchen at the minute I'm sure you're probably sitting at home, you're probably not allowed out too much and it's all a bit strange, uh, but what we'd like to do is to share with you some little thoughts, some little lessons that can be had from the Bible, uh, some stories, some lessons, some little verses to try and encourage us and to kind of keep us going. And as well as that, we want to include some of the songs that we would have normally on a Wednesday or a Sunday and maybe some other new songs that we've come across at this time just to share with folk whoever is listening in. Everyone's welcome to join us. Even if you don't normally come on a Wednesday or a Sunday, please share this link with whoever and they can join in too. Uh, and no matter if you're very young or very old, you can listen in and follow along, I'm sure. The first thing that we're going to do for this evening is that we want to have a little Bible story, a little lesson. And that Bible story has a lesson for each of us in it. And it's a story that we're going to share with you in a moment or two. As well as that, it would be useful to have a little think about trying to remember a little bit of the Bible. Normally each week in our children's meeting and in Sunday school, we have a memory challenge for you, a little verse from the Bible that we want you to try to learn. And we want you to try to get into your head to see if you can remember it, see if you can say it without having to look at it. And uh, well, you can have a go at this at home and you can have a go for yourself and see if you can remember this verse. And I have a little verse for today and it's found in the Bible, like all the verses that we have, all the, the memory challenges that we have, and it's found in the book of Isaiah, um, chapter 43 and verse 1, and it's just a little short bit of the verse that I want you to see if you can see, if you can get it into your head, get it into your brain, and see if you're able to say it and able to remember it without having to look. That would be really good. But maybe more important than that is it would be useful to see if you can try to understand it a little bit and what the message is for us. And in the passage it says, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. And this world seems to be going a little bit crazy at the minute. People are being told to stay indoors, to stay away from other people, to keep their distance, and to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things that we wouldn't normally be doing, to try to stop a disease, stop a virus from spreading and from passing it on to other people and to stop us catching it too. And lots of people are getting very afraid and sad to say some people have died because of this disease and the fear is that lots of other people will suffer and will be in hospital and find it very difficult. But whenever it comes to our lives, whenever it comes to things in this world, whenever it comes to the things around us, God tells us not to fear, not because the, the things around us can't do us any harm, they can, but God tells us not to fear because he is with us and we belong to him. The little verse I read says, fear not for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. If you're a Christian, if you're someone who's asked God for forgiveness and asked him to take away your sin and asked him into your life and to be with you through life, then you are part of his family. God has called you by name and you belong to him. So no matter what happens to you in this world, no matter what happens to you around, God is able to look after us and God is able to take care of us. God tells us, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name and you are mine. That word redeemed, whenever God says that we are redeemed, that means he's bought us. He's paid for us. We have done things wrong. 
We have broken his commands. We've done things that we know we shouldn't have done. We have sinned and we've broken his laws. But yet, despite all that, God still loves us and God cares for us. And that's an amazing message. And that's a message that goes to everyone today. That even though we've done wrong, God still loves us and cares for us. Even though we've broken his commands, he still wants to forgive us. And whenever he forgives us, he redeems us. He pays for the price of our wrong, of our sin. He paid for it himself on the cross. Whenever he died all those years ago and died on the cross at Calvary, he paid the price. He took the punishment. And because he paid, we are redeemed and we belong to him. And because we're part of his family, because we're redeemed, and because he knows us and he cares for us, and he looks after us one by one, we shouldn't fear. That's what that little verse tells us to do. So see if you can try and remember it. See if you can get it into your brain. See if you can remember it without saying it. It's Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1. And maybe if you don't have a Bible to read for yourself, well, here's my Bible. Here, take a look yourself. Now, I wonder, have you ever been in a foreign land or in another country or maybe in a situation where people are speaking in a language that you don't know, that you don't understand and you're not really sure what's going on? Uh, well, the Bible talks about someone, a man and some of his friends, in fact, lots of his country, who'd been taken out of the land where they lived, um, from their homes, from their families and were taken to a foreign land, a place that spoke a different language, that followed different rules, that had a different king, and that had a different religion. And this man, you read about him in the Bible, he's a very well-known person in the Bible. His name is Daniel. And in, in the Bible, in the book of Daniel, you can read all about him. You can read all about the things that happened to him. But he found himself in a very, very strange and a difficult situation. Here he was, a captive, locked up for no reason, but yet was taken as a captive and as a slave into a land called Babylon. And whenever he was taken into this land, out of the slaves and the other captives that were in that land, they decided to choose to pick out some of the best of the slaves that they had. And their job was to be working for the king, working for the king in the king's palace and doing his work. So it was quite an important job, but still not a great job to have as a slave. Um, Daniel had some friends. He and his friends were taken and they were brought into the palace. And through many things that happened to them, God looked after them and God took care of them. And Daniel served before the king, served in the palace for a very, very long time. Uh, and perhaps by the time he was starting to get to be an old man, he had seen at least two or three other kings and along came a new king for the land, a king called Darius. Now Darius really liked Daniel. Darius really thought highly of Daniel uh, and the reason why was because Daniel was honest and Daniel did the things right. Daniel tried to follow the laws and the reason why Daniel did those things was because Daniel was a follower of God. Daniel was someone who trusted in the Lord. Even when there were difficult circumstances, even when there were problems, even when it maybe meant he would perhaps lose his life or lose his liberty and lose his freedom, he still followed God and obeyed God and tried to keep God's commands. And because of that, God blessed Daniel and God looked after him and God took care of him and took him to a really fantastic job within the palace. Because the king, Darius, decided that he would pick out 120 uh, princes and they would be over all the different parts of his kingdom. Babylon had conquered lots of lands around about and there were lots of people spread all across the world that they knew about and King Darius was in charge. But he was sort of wise. He picked out 120 men who would look after each of those little bits of the kingdom and then above those 120 men, he chose out three, three presidents, three people who would look after all the affairs so that the king didn't really have to worry too much about it. Because the king trusted Daniel above the other ones. He picked out Daniel to be the one who was overall. Now, 
If you were Daniel, you might think, well, this is really good. You're in charge. You can do and you can do almost anything that you like. But yet Daniel still followed God, still obeyed God's word and still was true and still was honest. And I suppose the lesson for us in Daniel's life is whenever we find ourselves, when people trust us, whenever we find ourselves doing things, I wonder are we those that people trust us to do the right thing? Are we people that are always willing to help others? And are we always going to do the right thing? If you're a Christian, if you've trusted in Jesus as your saviour, then you have a responsibility to obey God and to follow his commands. And God would have us to be honest, would have us to be trustworthy and to do everything as well as we can and to the best of our ability. I wonder if you're a Christian, are you living and doing things as well as you can and as well as you should be? Maybe it's just at home. Maybe you're at home with your family. Are you living your life as best as you can? Do you obey your parents? Do you do what they tell you to do? Are you someone that can be trusted around the house and to do things? As a Christian, you probably should be. Well, Daniel, he was given this job. He was in charge of almost all of the kingdom. Only the king was more important and more powerful than he was. And the rest of the people that were there, the rest of those princes and the other presidents, they weren't very happy because they probably wanted that job that Daniel had. And they didn't like it, Daniel, because Daniel was too honest. Perhaps he was someone who showed up how bad they were and maybe how dishonest they were and how they did things that they perhaps they shouldn't have done. And so over time, they decided that they would follow Daniel they would watch Daniel and they would see where Daniel fell down. They would find out what he was doing wrong and they would expose him and tell, a, tell the king on him and they would get rid of Daniel and maybe they would be able to get that top job. The problem that they had was Daniel didn't do anything wrong. He followed the rules, he followed king's commands, he did all the things as best as he should. Even though the people were looking for something that they had done wrong, they couldn't find anything. Do you know something that reminds me? That you and I, if we were to look at our lives, if we would look deeply at the, how we live and the things that we do each day, the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we think about. Do you know something? All of us have done wrong. All of us have sinned. All of us have broken God's commands. All of us have broken his commands. And that's not good because that means we are enemies with God. That means we are against God. That means we're no longer friends with God. And the Bible says that whenever we're born in this world, we're enemies and we're against God. And for you and I to become part of God's family, we need to do something about those sin. We need to do something about the wrong things that we have done. We need to do something about the problem that we have in our hearts of sin. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Well, Daniel was in this kingdom. The people couldn't find anything wrong with him. But maybe one of them, or maybe some of them, came up with something clever. Something very, very smart. They decided that they would make a new law. And they would bring it to the king, and the king would probably like it, and they would get Daniel. The new law was... Because they had been watching Daniel, they, they knew that he prayed every day. They knew that it was his habit every day to go to his window, to kneel down and to pray three times. And they thought, well, if we make a rule that people aren't allowed to pray and aren't allowed to talk to their God, then Daniel is in trouble. And they took this law and they took it to the king and they told the king about it and said, we think you're such a fantastic king. We think you are so great. We think you are such a wonderful ruler that for 30 days, no one in all of the kingdom is allowed to ask anything of anybody except of you because you are so great. And the punishment will be they will be thrown into the lion's den. A room full of hungry, roaring lions. And the king, 
he, th he liked this room. He thought, yeah, that sounds good. I want everybody to think I'm the important one. I think I, everybody should bow down to me and should ask me for things. And the king decided, well, this is a great law. This is a wonderful law. People will follow me. People will love me. And he didn't really think about the, what the consequences would be. He didn't really think too hard about it. And this kind of shows maybe a little bit what we're like at times. We can be selfish. We can think about ourselves a lot. We can think about what makes us happy and the things that please us and just worry about making thing, making life easy for ourselves. I wonder if you like that king. Or do you think about other people? Do you worry about other people and their concerns? Do you try your best to help other people? Now, the problem that King Darius had was he didn't think about Daniel. And poor Daniel, whenever he heard the law, whenever he heard the new rule that he wasn't allowed to pray or talk to anyone else apart from the king, he had a hard and a difficult choice to make. He had a decision. He had to decide whether he was going to obey God or whether he was going to obey a man. Whether he was going to follow God's laws or whether he was going to follow the king's laws. And this was perhaps a hard decision. But maybe for Daniel it was an easy decision. Because all through his life he had always trusted God. All through his life he had always put God first. And so whenever it came down and it was this decision had to be made, he decided that he would put God first. And so, like every other day of his life, he went back to his house, he opened his window and he knelt down on his knees and prayed to God. The people that were jealous of him, the people that didn't like Daniel, they were watching out. And they saw what happened. They saw Daniel praying and they took Daniel to the king. They came to the king and said, Daniel was guilty of breaking this new law. He needs to be thrown into the lion's den. And Darius, whenever he realised he'd been tricked, whenever he realised that he'd made this law and it was going to put Daniel in trouble, he was very, very sorry. And the problem that the king had was he lived in a country where when the king made a law, no one was allowed to change it. Not even the king. Not even the king could change his mind and the get rid of a law that he didn't like and as tried and he tried as hard as he could and he tried everything that he could to try to get Daniel uh, out of punishment but it came to the end of the day and those princes those people that wanted to rid of Daniel insisted that the king had to obey his own law and so Daniel was taken and he was thrown into that den of lions. And while he was going, before he was thrown in, King Darius shouted something to him. And Darius said to Daniel, he said, Your king who you serve continually is able to deliver you. And King Darius, maybe you didn't really believe in God. Maybe you really didn't follow God or trust in God. But now he realised that God needed to help Daniel and Daniel needed God's help for Daniel to live. There was no way that he could survive by himself. There was no way that anyone could survive a night in the lion's den unless God or unless someone was looking after him. All that night, King Darius, he couldn't sleep. He was restless. He couldn't eat. He didn't want to listen to music. He didn't want to do the things that he normally did. And all night long, he worried about what was going to happen to his friend. And his trusted friend Daniel. And early in the morning, as soon as the sun came up, he came back to the lion's den. And he shouted down, Daniel, was your God able to save you? The God who you serve continually, was he able to save you? And Daniel was able to reply, yes, God was looking after me. God sent an angel to protect me. And even though he was in that terrible, awful situation, where for anyone else it would have been certain death. Where for anyone else he would have been ripped apart by those lions. God protected him. God looked after him. And God was his friend. And God sent that angel to make sure that no harm came to him. Darius realised from that moment on 
that God was real. Darius realised from that moment on that people in the land should be trusting in God. Not in him, not in him as a king and as a great ruler, but he made a new law. He made a new law and the new law was that people in all of his lands, in all of his kingdoms, were to obey and were to honour Daniel's God and were to follow him. Darius realised then that God was real, that God was in control and God was above all and was powerful. I wonder do you realise that God is real, that God is above all and God is powerful. I wonder do you realise that God can really make a difference in your life and God can do amazing things for you and can do amazing things in your life. Maybe you've heard lots of stories from the Bible. This story about Daniel is really, really well known. Lots and lots of people have heard it. Lots and lots of people know about it. But maybe very few people really realise the truth of it. And really realise that what it means is we should realise that God is in control. And realise that God is over all. And realise that we should be obeying God. We should be trusting him. And we should be giving our lives to him. I wonder in our lives, have we realised that God is in control? I wonder in our lives, have we realised that we need God? And we need him to take away our sin. I talked a little bit earlier on about sin. And about how we have all done wrong. And about how we are all sinners. And how we've broken God's laws. But you know something? God has made a way for us to be forgiven for our sin. God has made a way for us to have our sins taken away and to have a new life and a new start with him. Whenever Jesus came into this world, Jesus was God. He died on a cross and he died so that we, we who are sinful, we who have done wrong, could be forgiven and can have our sins taken away. I wonder in your life, have you realised that wonderful truth that even though you've done wrong, even though you've sinned, Jesus can forgive you? and can take away your sin and give you a new life and give you a chance of going to be with him in heaven one day. That's a really amazing message. That's the message that Christians throughout many years, throughout many centuries and through difficult times and through hard times have been telling the world and telling anyone who will listen that God loves them, God cares for them, God will punish them because of their sin but God also offers forgiveness for the wrong that they've done if they trust in him and that's a message that's the same today as it was in Daniel's day and whenever Jesus was on the earth it's a message that's free and it's open to all everyone no matter how old or how young how rich or how poor can realize that God loves them God cares for them and they can ask for forgiveness for the wrong that they've done Maybe that's something that you want to think about or maybe want more information about. Then do email the church um, and you'll find the details on the church's website uh, for more information about maybe how you can know God for yourself and have your sins forgiven and know for sure that God is looking after you and taking care of you. And it's something that's really important and something maybe you're really missing out on in life if that's not the case. That's my little story finished. That's my little lesson finished. But I wonder, maybe you'll have a chance over the next week, between now and our next little lesson, to have a think about these things. Maybe if you have a Bible, um, whether it's a, a big Bible like this one, maybe even it's just a, a little Bible like this for toddlers, or something in between, it might be a good chance and a good opportunity, uh, because you probably have lots of time on your hands, to have a little read at it. Read a story at a time, a chapter at a time, and see what you can learn and see what you can understand more about God. And it's really important. The book is a, is a really important book, the Bible, because it tells us everything that we need to know about God. And it tells us how you and I, even though we've done wrong, can have our sins forgiven and sins taken away. So it, it contains really fantastic, amazing good news. Now, we're, over the next few weeks, each Wednesday evening, we're going to post up another little story, another little lesson, perhaps another little memory challenge. Uh, and as well as that, we'll maybe try to uh, put a few little challenges on our website, on the church website, 
and uh, maybe if you have time um, maybe to colour in some uh, pictures that we might post up or some little quizzes that we might post and if you're able to do them and send them back well that would be fantastic and uh, we'll see if we can show off those of you that have done some colouring in or completed our quizzes and we'll put them on our little videos as the week goes along. Thanks for listening uh, for this evening and pass it on to maybe anybody who you know who might be able to listen in for themselves and uh, that would be really great. Thank you and I'll talk to you next week again. Bye.